Hey, good people, Batavia here. We made it to mid-July. We have a garden walk that I wanna share with y'all today. So we're gonna go ahead and dig in. So for me, the goal of my garden walks, and I try to do these based on my schedule every morning, um, is observe, right? Take a look at what's happening. I make a list of what I need to do in the garden in my head most times, um, but today I'll have it on camera. And it helps me stay on top of things like, Am I looking at some pest issues? You know, are there some maintenance activities that I need to do? Um, and so on. So, you know, what's to harvest? All of those things. When I fight the urge to do some maintenance activities, I'm just going to take inventory of what I need to do, what I need to harvest. Um, I have flowers on my beans now. So I'm going to, oh, look, a little bitty bean. <laughs> so sorry. Uh, so, yeah, we're starting to get beans on the bush beans here um, so I'll keep an eye on those over the next few days as they get larger really trying to harvest early and often um, I could say that because a lot of stuff hasn't come in yet um, this here this little contraption these are my potatoes there are four containers here you can see uh, the plants look pretty tragic that's not them dying back there's some disease there it looks like um, so I probably will at some point come in and cut some of that back just to see if I can stop it from spreading. I think these potatoes still have some growing to do. I have a couple of strawberries here that I want to make sure I come in. Oh, those are pretty. I really want to move this container, but I just need a space for it that's going to be under cover. Um, so we'll work on that. One of the things that I'm really pleased with this season, which is very different than others, the garden is, in my mind, and the way that I normally kind of manage things, it's a mess. I still have things everywhere. Yeah, I still have so many flowers. This is like weeks and weeks of things that we're, I've been trying to plant these flowers out and have not gotten to it. But I normally try to get all of these things done in an order and then plant. And ultimately that leads to delays with, you know, things growing. This year I didn't do that. I just planted as I went along, worked on projects. I still have projects to do, but that's okay because things are growing. And so now it is a bit challenging because I'm starting to harvest some things and I'm still planting things. I'm still working on projects, but we'll be fine, right? For garden walk purposes, I'm just making sure things look healthy. They're not challenged in any way um, and keeping an eye on what's to come. I need to get in here and I think I'm going to use this type of netting. Last year I had it like basically nailed in and covered here. If I had space to put this in a, an area where I wouldn't worry about digging, I would. These are carrots. Um, anywho, right now the observation is they're unbothered. Chard looks good. Uh, my tomatoes, oh dear goodness. So I have to come in once these dry up a bit and really get to tying some things up. This first plant is a determinant, so I don't really want to cut away it much more of it. Um, but this next one, these next couple, are really starting to put on fruit. Poor Batavia's attempt at single stemming. Um, but that's okay because, you know, for the stems I do have, they are putting on some nice fruit, pineapple, tomato there. So the takeaway is really to get in and tie these plants up a bit more. This is the first time I've grown in this area with tomatoes ever in my garden. And so all of this that I've done here, it doesn't create for a very convenient walking area. Um, so that's a mental note I'm making. However, I think I'm just going to shimmy around because I really like having these tomatoes under this net. The telltale will be once they start to get red. Um, so I don't see anything blushing in there yet. That was a quick glance though. My garlic, it's time for this bed. This is a four by four bed. I'm calling it ready to harvest. I'm just trying to get a few more days of dry weather in a row so I don't have to harvest it really wet. I'm not sure if we're going to get that though. This area is still under construction. 
So our aroma in this 20 gallon container, oh gosh, I couldn't be more pleased. This is the best success I've had with tomatoes in containers, as long as I've been trying to grow tomatoes in containers. Um, and so my great hope is that I will be able to tussle with these containers and put them in between here inside of the cage baby you know so I don't have to worry about um, animals trying to eat at the ripe tomatoes but I do see the first sign of a cherry tomato blushing so it's almost time I've not harvested tomatoes out of the garden yet everything over here looks pretty good that's the okra plant um, in the 20 gallon container my potatoes these potatoes so as a comparison these potatoes were probably planted near the same time and just look at the greenness in these plants compared to the ones that are on the deck so for my squash what i'm checking for is to see if i'm having pollination issues which i have on a few plants um, we'll see how these do i don't know if these were pollinated and i didn't get out here to hand pollinate them i know one of my least favorite things to do um, but i know that one is good that's more like the size that I want. This is a gray zucchini. I love the look of this zucchini. Um, and then here, I have one where I need to come in and harvest. Definitely larger than I want it. Uh, there you can get a look. You see that yellow there? That was not pollinated. And so I'll cut that off as well when I come in and get that larger zucchini. I don't have flowers, it looks like, yet on these pole beans um, oh, this is a good indication of the rain oh 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 <laughs> yeah okay it's a beetle in there uh, but that's how much rain we've gotten over the last two days three days all right um we already know what's going on here and it's just basically i need to get in here and harvest <laughs> this is definitely on the list for this weekend so again, for this garden walk, I'm making a note of things that are ready to come out of the garden, ready to harvest, like all of this kale, forgive the shadows. Um, and then also I notice I have a hole here that I need to patch. We don't want that to spread and let the cabbage moth get in there. Uh, but all in all looks good. I'm trying to peek in through here. So now I pull the squash plants out. So they're only collard green plants in here. And this is the one of the challenges with cover. Like I can't exactly see what's going on. It looks like things are okay, but I do have this weekend the goal to harvest the mature leaves. I still have things to plant out, namely the kale and some herbs. I, I may still add some of these pepper plants in. You just never know if I find space for it. All right, we're gonna go to the front yard. So the sun is, it gets to the front yard around nine-ish. Um, so I can never remember to start working up here first, just like with my garden chores. Um, but I'm checking to see how the younger crops are doing, like my okra. You know, I'm just keeping an eye on the onions, primarily because it's my first year growing them in this way. Um, and so I just want to make sure that they're doing the thing they're supposed to do. Here, really, it's a quick pass through. I'm seeing flowers and seeing some uh, small fruit for my bell peppers. Since my potato plants look healthy, although I don't know if this is wind that's pushed them or if they are leaning to the sun, um, but <laughs> I can't help every year. It seems that I end up just in, encroaching on this little walkway here um, so I could also tie this back I probably won't get to it just because the list is pretty long so this is I've done such a better job at single stemming here so the note here is to tie up a couple of these plants I'm not sure what I want to do here um, because if I plan on covering this little area you know like with netting I I'm not going to want to cover it and let that plant continue to grow up. Um, that is, I think that's the mortgage lifter. So, I know, I, I mean, it seems logical. I could just top this off and be done with, you know, kind of vertical growing with this and just wait for the rest of the tomato plants, wait for the rest of the tomatoes to produce. Um, so that's a thing, of course. 
I don't know. Um, I, if I'm really honest, I'm probably just going to tie these tomato plants up and deal with like kind of this really large tomato plant another day. Or not at all, to be quite frank. I still haven't decided how I'm going to protect those tomatoes. Um, celery looks great. Uh, so it's recovered from that initial kind of transplanting and that underwatering. I have to harvest strawberries. I know that. And then I can get in there to do some weeding. Some of these weed trees, that I like to call them. So the happy moments, right? I'm on watch for my dahlias. These will be the first dahlias that bloom. So it's not all about work, you know, that you're making a note of. It's about not missing the moment of some beauty. The gladiolas, I promise they didn't look like this yesterday. You know, well, maybe they did yesterday, but not the day before. Um, and so, so yeah, that is super cool. I am now on watch because I've had flowers produced on the Scarlet Runner beans, which again, that color I was looking for, definitely got it. I definitely do have cucumbers that are coming in. So this is now on a daily watch. I probably have like two or three days maybe before I really need to come in here. Assuming I don't have anything that's gotten a size already. So if I wasn't filming, I'd take a closer look to make sure that I don't have anything that's larger because if that's the case, things could change like in, you know, two days. Uh, sunflowers, because there's so many of them <laughs> and they're so large, you know, part of the watch is making sure that, you know, do I need to tie anything up? Um, or are they kind of managing things on their own? Uh, here we have flowers that are taking well, canna lilies. Um, no issues with the squash, it looks like. Um, this pepper plant is not doing well there. Um, it just got planted a couple of weeks ago, but not looking great. That's the same pepper that I have here. I sowed some cucumbers where you see that there's a little bit like missing straw. So I'm keeping an eye on when they are gonna germinate. I'm paying close attention to these melons that are just starting to put on leaves, really growing and climbing. Well, I'm training them up the trellis. This cabbage, I hope you can see this. This looks like it's near ready to um, harvest. I probably have another week or two for this. So I'm not going to open this up just because it's a little bit of a pain. Um, this one's much further away. Um, so just again, mental note there, more melons. And then okra, again, newer plants that are kind of slowly taking off, keeping an eye on. Oh, I forgot the list. So this cabbage is ready. Let's see. Yeah, it's firm. It's not going to get any bigger. It's starting to get a little bit of damage here. This one looks like it could hold a little while longer. Okie doke. So we have rain in the forecast again today. Um, and generally that's okay because I have my work day ahead of me inside. I probably am going to look at basically like the next seven to 10 days, you know, so on that kind of week-ish time frame. First, I want to harvest. That's going to be the first priority, harvesting my basil, which I keep on forgetting to show y'all. Um, and it is absolutely gotten away from me. It's starting to, you know, bolt and go to flower, which I don't want. Um, I have another set of basil that I need to plant, but we'll get to that in a minute. So harvesting basil, harvesting at least one of those cabbage, which can store in the crisper for quite a while. You know, we're talking about a couple of weeks easily. And I'll store that um, only because I have greens to harvest, plenty of them. All of my kale, using cut and come again. So when I say all, I mean like all of the mature leaves. So we'll skinny those plants down um, as well as my collards. And I have a friend lined up to take the first gift of collards uh, for the season, which I'm pretty excited about. And then we'll cook down, you know, a big pot of the rest of them enjoy a couple of bowls of collards over the next few days but then also preserve them i'll likely freeze them 
depending on once I harvest them, what it looks like, this may be a good chance to try to preserve them by pressure canning them. Um, I've never done it before and I'm a tinge bit nervous about it. I've pressure canned before, but I'm still new to that, but I've never um, pressure canned collards before. And it'd be nice to just be able to take collards, which if you're returning, you know I love them, but take them off the shelf versus knowing that I want collards two days from now, so taking them out of the freezer. Um, but we'll see what, how that works out. You know, a couple of strawberries, that zucchini, need to harvest that. Um, as far as maintenance goes, I need to definitely get in and tie up the tomatoes that are in that backyard garden bed, those two beds there. That has to be a priority before I you know, experience some damage to those plants. I may do some light pruning. They are pretty crowded in there. Um, and then I have the front yard, so the bed behind you all. Um, I need to just quickly tie up a couple of those so that won't be too much work. Um, I also have, again, if we stretch this out over like the next seven, eight, nine, ten days, I have, um, and my hope is to get videos out for this, I have a green stalk that I need to plant. I have two green stalks, but I've committed to planting one of them this year. <laughs> so I need to plant that. I have kale still in the backyard, um, back porch. I have basil, another round of basil that I need to plant, um, and you know all of the flowers. You saw all of that, right? You know, so I'm hoping to get to that, you know, over these next several days, and then I have a whole new garden bed, right, that I need to to assemble and get loaded up. Um, I've come to the realization that I'm going to focus that area on fall plantings. Um, so the city's starting to get busy, um, so I won't have to worry at all about. Do I have space, you know, can I free up space in what I already have in the garden? I can just go ahead and focus on that bed for fall plantings and then whatever other space that I have open, which will, you know, oh shoot, I forgot about harvesting the garlic. Too funny, I have my earbuds in, so when I said I forgot to harvest, I forgot about harvesting the garlic, Siri said on it, um, she's more on it than I am. So do you. My buddy Ben and I were talking about this on the Backyard Gardens podcast. Um, garden things, all of them we talk about. New episodes on Thursdays. You can check the description if you're interested in, in checking us out. I'll drop a couple of links, uh, but it's anywhere that you listen to podcasts. Um, but what were we talking about? Huh. Just a plug for the show, I guess. Um, so yeah, I July is still going to be pretty busy and I need to make sure that I have my house in order quite literally um, because things are going to start to come in and I want to make sure that I am making the best of it. One of the things that the garden walks are also able to do is it's kind of just pouring into me when it comes to being a gardener and continuing to learn, right? I'm able to observe the beginning of things growing and you know I kind of file that away. Right? I learn what a bean looks like, you know, from the point of going from leaves to flowers to the first signs of a bean, right? Um, and that's important to me and really exciting, you know, and even if I've seen it five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, a dozen years, it's still pretty exciting for me. And that's a part of this, right?